Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be doing Unit 1, Lesson 5 of Grade 6, Open Up Resources. So these are the practice problems, and let's go ahead and jump in. We're talking about bases and heights of parallelograms today. Select all parallelograms that have the correct height labeled for the given base. So we've got A, B, C, and D. So A, we see is a parallelogram, it's a rectangle. So the base and the height here, uh, those match up. So yes, A works out. And I take a look at B, and I say that, see that the base is here, and the height is listed here as this diagonal. So we know that that's incorrect because the base has to be, excuse me, the height needs to be perpendicular to the base and it needs to go from one side to the other. So B does not work. That's not one. Let's take a look at C. C says, all right, well, if this is my base here and I've got the height that goes up this way, if I make a dotted line over to here and I draw a perpendicular straight up to there, that's the given height. So that does work out. So C is actually correct. And then with D, we see this is the base that's listed and there's a perpendicular here and this dotted line comes across, extends the base, and there's a perpendicular right there with the right angle, and that's listed as the height. So D works out also. So A, C, and D. Okay. Number two. The side labeled B has been chosen as the base for this parallelogram. Draw a segment showing the height corresponding to that base. Okay, so there's a couple different ones that we can draw here. If this is the base, there's a couple different heights that we can draw. So we know that if this is uh, horizontal, then we can draw a vertical that comes up right here. So that's one height. Another height would be right here because this is a vertical line that's perpendicular to the base right there. If we wanted to, we could also draw a dotted line coming out this way. And then we could draw a height right here. We would need to put a little right angle indicator saying that these are perpendicular. The other one that we can do is if we could, even though this is um, not the base listed, we could also make a perpendicular here. And that could be another one. So several different options for the height that corresponds to the base. Number three says find the area of each parallelogram. Okay, so we know that the area of the parallelogram is going to equal the base times the height. So we want to find the base and the height of each of these three parallelograms. Well, this one is pretty straightforward. It's a rectangle, so we see the base here is two. Excuse me, the height is two, and the base is one, two, three, four units. So that's going to be two times four, which equals eight square units. Okay. All right, now for B, this one is a parallelogram. It's got two sets of parallel sides, and it has four sides to it. So we know that it's a parallelogram. The angles, the opposite angles, are also equal to each other. All right, so we know that we're going to have to multiply the base times the height, and the height has to be a perpendicular. So our base is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units, and the height is going to be a perpendicular. I'll just choose this one right here, and that's 2. So for this one, it's going to be 5 times 2, which equals 10 square units. All right, now C. C is a little bit different because it's it has more it's more tilted and it's got a little fewer different angles, but the idea is basically the same. We can look at it and say this is going to be the base over here on this side, and then what's our height? So our base is one two, and our height is perpendicular, so it goes straight across, right to there, and it goes through the figure. So that one that's a little bit easy. We have one two three four units. So this one is going to be two times four, which equals eight square units. Okay, number four. Number four says, if the side that is six units long is the base of this parallelogram, what is its corresponding height? So this is gonna be the parallelogram that corresponds to that here. Okay, so if the side that is six units long is the base of the parallelogram, what is its corresponding height? We see this is six, and we've got a couple choices here. This is perpendicular to this side, and it's 4.8 units long. This is perpendicular to this side, which is four units long. And then this is the side, which is five units long. Well, we know from our definition that the base 
of the, rect uh, the base of the parallelogram is measured here, and the height is perpendicular to that base. So this one here is the only one that is perpendicular directly to this side, which is the, the side of 6. So that tells us that 4 is the height that corresponds to this base right here. So C would be the correct answer at 4 units. Okay, 5 says find the area of each parallelogram. And again, we're going to need to use um, the measurements that we've been given here. All right, A says we have a base of 9 and a height of 4. So using area equals base times height of parallelogram, we do 9 times 4, which equals 36 square units. Okay. Now for B, we've got 5 here and 5 here and 4 there. So we want to remember that the base here and the height corresponds. The height is perpendicular to the base that's given. Even though this says 5 and that says 5, we could get tricked and think this is the base and that's the height. But remember the base and the height, the height has to be perpendicular to that base. So we're going to use 5 times 4 equals 20 um, units squared. Okay, now this one doesn't have any numbers on it, so I'm a little curious about what's going on there. Well, with this, what we're being asked to do is not necessarily come up with a number for an answer, but for an actual formula. So the base is here, and the height is there. This base and this base are the same. So we come down here and we see that the height is perpendicular to this base. We know that they're, um, they're the same, so we can use this height and this base. So in this situation, our answer is just base times height. And that's going to be our final answer. No numbers, just that. Number six, do you agree with these statements? Explain your reasoning. A parallelogram has six sides. Okay, so the um, answer to that one is pretty straightforward because our rule is a parallelogram has to have four sides. So I disagree. Parallelograms. Oops, pair. Parallelograms, I spelled that wrong, let me start over. Parallelograms must have four sides. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. I agree. This meets the definition of a Parallelo, parallelogram. <laughs> okay. See, a parallelogram can have two pairs of parallel sides. Oh, sorry. A parallelogram can have one pair or two pairs of parallel sides. I disagree. Because a parallelogram, I'm just going to call it a P, <laughs> must have two pairs of parallel sides. It can't have one or two. It must have two pairs. D. All sides of a parallelogram have the same length. Disagree? Um, so the parallelogram, a parallelogram, may have two different side lengths. Now, the two side lengths, as we see up here, B and B, and, and this side and this side, 5 and 5 and 5 and 5, 9 and 9, and we don't know how long this is. But the, these two sides are all going to be the same. But you can't have um, all, they don't, they don't have to have the same side length. In this one, they do. In a square, they would have the same, but those are the only instances. All angles of a parallelogram have the same measure. I disagree. Only opposite angles must have the same measure. Okay. And lastly, number seven. Number seven says a square with an area of one square meter is decomposed into nine identical small squares. Each small square is decomposed into two identical triangles. 
Okay, so that's a little confusing, so I'm going to draw a picture of it just to make sense. All right, I've got a square here, and this is decomposed into nine identical small squares. Well, that tells me that this is going to be a three by three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Each small square is decomposed into two identical triangles. Okay, so now we have 18 triangles because 9 times 2 is 18. All right, so this is what it, this is what they're trying to get out of what it looks like. What is the area in square meters of six triangles? If you get stuck, draw a diagram. Okay, we already did that. So let's look at six triangles. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that, to me, here, is one-third of the whole size, uh, excuse me, of the whole area. So here, we know that the area of this is one meter squared, because they told us right here, one square meter. What is the area in square meters of six triangles? If you get stuck, draw a diagram. All right, well, if this, this, these six triangles are one-third of the whole thing, then what's one-third of one? It's just one-third one-third of a meter squared. Okay, so this is how many triangles are needed to compose a region that is one and a half square meters. Well, I know that this square is one hole, so there's 18 there. So if I have one hole, that's going to give me 18, but then I need a half of that. Well, what's half of 18? Half of 18, 18 divided by 2 is just 9. So then that's going to give me my one hole, which is 18, plus, let's say this is about half of that, um, so that's going to be my 9. So I have 18 plus 9, which equals 27 triangles. Okay, great. So that's all of them. Again, this was Unit 1, Lesson 5, Bases and Heights of Parallelograms of Grade 6 for Open Up Resources. Hope that was helpful. Keep learning and keep making mistakes. Bye.